Hola, hola. My name is Ramon, cosmetic formulator and sunscreen fanatic. And today we're talking about just that, a sunscreen review and a mineral sunscreen review at that's from a really hot brand right now. This product launched, I believe, two or three months ago. And I've had a lot of requests for this. I've seen a lot of people try this out, have very strong opinions of it. And so with that today, I'm giving you my opinions of it. And we're talking about the Bliss Blockstar SPF 30. So this is a 100% mineral sunscreen from Bliss using only mineral filters. And they says right in the title, it is an invisible daily sunscreen. And we know when we see invisible and mineral together, those things don't often go together. Those continents do not meet. And so obviously we're going to be testing if it does work on brown skin, which on a related note, make sure you check the description box. I'll have linked my brown skin friendly sunscreen series because I've tested so many mineral sunscreens that make these bold claims. And also make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you know when I post other mineral sunscreen reviews, skincare videos, etc. So looking at the claims for this, this is from Bliss. It's their broad spectrum SPF 30 invisible daily sunscreen. It features 100% mineral filters. Specifically, you have titanium dioxide at 4.1% and zinc oxide at 11.5%. Fun fact, this is also made in Korea. With that being said, because it is designated for the US and EU markets, it has to comply with those regulations and get all the third party testing done for those markets. So you can trust the SPF factor on this. Don't worry about it. Looking at the claims on the box, it says it's a silky 100% mineral sunscreen that's sheer, blends in effortlessly for a superior daily mineral protection and an invisible finish. We keep saying that invisible a lot. Bliss is one of those clean brands. It's very blatantly on the side of this. They're also vegan and cruelty free. And looking at the formulation, this is a very simple sunscreen. Aside from the filters, you have a good amount of botanical extracts, but specifically a lot of them are part of their antioxidant blend that they're touting for the formulation, specifically blueberry, acai, and green tea extracts. There's also rose fruit oil, which they're saying helps with uh, controlling excess oil production throughout the day. And this does also have lavender oil. So do note if you are sensitive to that. And something they're not advertising at all because it's nowhere on the packaging and it's nowhere on the website claims is that this does have iron oxide. This is a tinted mineral sunscreen. And usually when you see that, there's always a lot of claims around blue light protection, periodical protection. And so don't see that, but do note it is tinted. So let's get into the application part of the video. For the application footage you're gonna be seeing, I measure out 0.8 grams of the product, which is roughly one finger length for me. I do measure it out, I have a little scale. And that is what I'm putting on my face. Because this is a tinted product, I do not want this on my ears. I don't want this on my neck because I know it will transfer on my clothes and stuff. So this is going on my face. I will be applying it on my face, working it in, letting it sit down for at least five minutes before I go on top of it with makeup for the first day. For the second day, I wear it on a bare face and I also reapply it on top of itself so you can see if there's a white cast and how badly the reapplication exacerbates that white cast. So for day one, this was my makeup day. This was also my first time applying this on camera. I have been playing around with this for a minute, but this is the first day I recorded it. I did a half face application of the product so that you can see what it looks like on half face versus a half with no sunscreen to see if there is any white cast. Skin prep for this was very basic. I did a hydrator and a serum. And you can see after I work it into half of my face, it works in very quickly. It works in very nicely, but you can see a distinct area where that line is between the no sunscreen with sunscreen. After I rub it in for a little bit and let it sit down for five minutes though, where is that line? It actually works into my skin very, very well. Not only that, but the texture of the sunscreen is very beautiful on the skin. No issues with that at all. You can see the side by side with sunscreen, no sunscreen. I don't personally notice any distinct difference, so very positive on that. I go in and apply it on the other half of my face, let it set, and then I go on top with makeup. Honestly, there was no issues. That first day was a really positive experience in all areas, and I thought it looked really, really well. And then you can see for the end of day check-in, my makeup looked okay. This was, I believe, around seven hours aware, and I was just at home. I noticed, obviously, some creasing on my eyelids. That's very normal. But elsewhere on my face, I didn't notice any abnormal texture issues. For second day, this was bare face, just a sunscreen to see what that looked like and how it wore. For day two, I did very, very simple skin prep again. This time I did use a moisturizer underneath it, but a very lightweight gel one. Having oily skin, I like to minimize layers. This actually has a nice semi-moisturizing texture I could get away with, especially on a hot or muggy day. If you have dry skin, do adequately prep your skin, but I'll have more on that in a second. And again, we know what it looks like on bare skin. It actually looks really nice on me. I find it has a very diffusing finish. It's very much like a primer without feeling very much like a silicone primer. So texture and pores kind of diminished, oil controlled. And that is the most positive element of this in my opinion it does a very good job of giving me a nice natural satin matte finish throughout the day it just feels really nice and light on the skin the reapplication though and this is always where mineral sunscreens tend to falter i measure out 0.8 grams again go and reapply it on top like i normally do for both the initial and the reapplication i work it in layers with mineral sunscreens i know it's definitely a more safe bet so i do about three sheer layers of the product and i work each in surprisingly here we are this is actually with the reapplication i didn't film a check-in afterwards but this is what uh, two applications of the Bliss Blockstar looks like. 
I am not noticing, I mean, in person, I don't see it, any distinct noticeable white cast, quite honestly. Like the biggest uh, indicator is usually like my face to my neck and my chest, also my hand. It looks good. It feels good. It doesn't feel heavy. So overall, I'm not mad at this, but there are some caveats and let's get into it. So now let's get into the four Bs. That is my mineral sunscreen testing rubric. And that is basically the metrics that I use to measure how successful or how bad a mineral sunscreen is. And those four Bs are beard, beading, beets, and brown skin friendly. First B is beard. How does it work into the hairline, facial hair, eyebrows and whatnot. And this is the mineral sunscreen. Very much, it's expected there's going to be some issues, but surprisingly, very minimal with this. I think you can notice it more on the first day and now with the reapplication. It does get caught in the beard, but surprisingly not very bad. This is arguably one of the more elegant experiences I've had with the mineral sunscreen. This being tinted is helping it a little bit, but it's not really in my eyebrows. It's not really in my mustache. And it was very easy to work into my hairline. If I were to wear this out and about in like actual like daylight in public, I would be very careful to avoid the like beard line or just really work it in or clean it up. Second B is beats, how it works with makeup. Does it affect makeup application? Does it affect makeup wear throughout the day? And does it affect the overall look of the makeup? And overall, no. There is no claims anywhere about this being a makeup primer or working well with makeup, but it does. It works very nicely as a makeup base. Again, it's oil controlling and it does have a primary feel to it that does blur some of the pores and texture. Because this is very lightweight, like I don't feel it. It's not very sticky. I don't feel like this alters necessarily the way the makeup wears. There was some creasing. I feel like maybe potentially it maybe just expedited how makeup creased under my eyes. At most, that was my only issue. Also, my expression lines on my forehead. But those are normal things, so I can't knock the sunscreen for that. But what I will say is, while I can't feel it on my face and it's not sticky at all, it's just one of those things where it's, it's a mineral sunscreen. There's body to it, so that is one thing worth noting where I feel like it does sit nicely into my skin, but I feel like makeup, depending on what your skin type is and what kind of makeup you're using, might have the tendency to slide on this a little bit more. It's hard to explain. Next B is going to be beading. Does it bead and pill up? Are there weird textural issues? And how how does it play with the skincare that's underneath it? And again, this is a very elegant texture. I find there's no issues. It just glides on the skin elegantly, whether it was a couple hydrators underneath or a moisturizer underneath, there was no pilling, no texture issues, it didn't ball up. And then the last B, brown skin friendly, the hot topic. And this is where I think the biggest caveat exists. I am right in the middle. I am Fenty 290. I'm in that point now where I'm about to tan and get a little bit out of that into the 300 range. It works be beautifully. My boyfriend, he was like, wait, do you have it on right now? And I'm like, this is reapplied on top of it. Itself, and he's like, it looks really good on you, which this is always where these mineral sunscreens tend to fail. I posted this on Instagram because I kind of knew, but I wanted to get some people's reaction from it. And basically the consensus is up until about Fenty mid 300s, this is not a bad option. Beyond that, it starts to go downhill. I have a few creator friends who have deeper skin that tend to prefer mineral sunscreens, but it's always a gamble as to what'll work for them. And this is one where pretty consistently it missed the mark. I have it right up on screen here, but this is my friend Glow with Addo on Instagram. And you can see in this reel, this is her applying the Bliss Block Star. And even with that first initial layer, she did what I do where you apply it in more sheer layers. You can tell right off the bat, it is not going to work for her. I have a link in the description box, also a review from a fellow YouTuber, Tamino Abby, where she also applied this and it just, it, it didn't work for her skin tone at all either. And then I also reached out to my friend Kathy, Vividly Kathy on Instagram, because she's talked about this before with me and I just wanted to like make sure. And she said, this is the one option that doesn't sting around her eyes. So if you have really sensitive skin, especially around the eye area, this is going to be a more safe bet. But she's like, I can't wear this without makeup. It has a very pronounced cast and it's hard to cover up unless you wear makeup. So for the most part, it is not brown skin friendly, deep skin friendly. But another friend of mine, Duyas Glow, AKA Yuri, responded and she was like, unless I have a very hydrating, like dewy, juicy, hydrating emollient and base underneath it, it will leave a cast. With that specific base underneath it, I can make it work. So this is one of those things where it's not gonna be the easiest to function for you if you do have deeper skin. The tint itself doesn't necessarily aid it in being very invisible like they keep claiming. So unanimously, I'm not going to say it is brown skin friendly and in order to make it work, if you have deeper skin, you have to put in a lot of effort. So this is where it really misses the mark. I do also want to note that, and I, this is an opinion I've expressed here on my channel, I find oftentimes, especially people who do the two or three finger method, they tend to over apply these mineral sunscreens, especially these tinted ones. And that is where I find a lot of the issues generally lie, where if you apply a lot of these sunscreens, it's not gonna be elegant on you. But for those creators I mentioned watching the footage, I'm like, no, they're applying an adequate amount and it's still having that result. So do note, this is one where even user error excluded, it's just not an elegant option for deeper skin tones. I do also want to note, these opinions are entirely my own. Bliss actually did reach out to me and they offered to send me this in PR. And this was after I already purchased it myself. So I do have two of these. I bought one of them myself, so opinions are very much based on my own experience. But overall final thoughts on this, I don't hate this, but it's 
getting a C from me. And the reason being is it functions well for me and the things that I need from a sunscreen. I have oily skin, I am medium skin tone, and I tend to wear makeup a good amount of time. So I want a sunscreen that could potentially work well with all three of those things. It doesn't work for deeper skin tones. It is not brown skin friendly. Price point wise, both here in the UK and in the US, it's either 20 pound or $20. That's for 40 mil. So it's a little bit smaller than standard sunscreen packaging. So that makes it a very like high moderate price sunscreen. So it's not necessarily the most affordable, even though I would consider Bliss to be a drugstore brand considering it's sold at Boots and at Target. This is oily skin friendly, acne prone skin friendly, sensitive skin friendly. So it can work for a lot of different skin types. It's just a skin tone issue where it really falls short for me. It works for me, but it's not the most inclusive and that's what's really important for my channel. So I really wanna make a point of expressing that. And with that, that's my review of the Bliss Block Star. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, notification bell, so that you know when I post more skincare, sunscreen, and fancy related content on my channel. Leave it a thumbs up and down below in the comments, let me know, have you tried this? What are your thoughts on it? Are the same as mine? And also what other mineral sunscreens are you loving right now? I love getting your guys' recommendations and they've definitely helped me discover some amazing sunscreens. So sound off. Thanks for watching guys. Bye.